So here we're looking at the second FRQ in the 2025 AP pre-calculus. Um, so a musician, re musician released a new song on a streaming service. A streaming service an online entertainment source that allows users to play music on their computers and mobile devices. Okay, fantastic. Great that they explained that to us. Several months later, the musician begins using an app that counts the total number of plays for a song since the release. A play is a single stream of song in the streaming service. The table gives the total number of plays in thousands for selected times. After the music, musician began using the app, at t equals zero, the total number of plays was 25,000, t equals two was 30,000, t equals four was 34,000. Total number of plays in thousands for the song since its release can be modeled by the function a t squared plus b t plus c, where d of t is in thousands for the song since its release, and t is the number of months after the musician began using the app. Okay, so a lot of explanation of just the context. There's a play, is they're playing a song, and we're seeing the number of thousands of songs that are being played. Use the given data, write three equations that we use to find the values for the constants A, B, and C and the expression for D of T. Well, we're just gonna plug it into here. We're gonna say D of zero is plugging zero into this expression. It's gonna be A times zero squared plus B times zero plus C. And we know D of zero has to be 25. Okay, so that's one equation. Or, you know, this is just gonna tell you C is equal to 25 because these are all zero. And then d of 2 is going to be a times um, 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c is equal to 30. So that implies that that converts to this equation 4a plus 2b plus c is equal to 30. And then d of 4 is a plugging in for the t, you know, it's going to be 4 squared plus b times 4 plus c is equal to 34. And so we're just going to get 16a plus 4b plus c is equal to 34, right? So that's kind of our systems of equations. That's part one there. And now we just want to find the that now we want to find the actual answer. So for part two, we would say, well, we know c is equal to 25, and we can use Desmos to help us figure out the other two values because the other twos are two equations, two unknowns. So we could just use this is a calculator question. So just pulling up Desmos, you could just replace A and B with like X and Y. So 4X plus 2Y plus 25 is equal to 30. And then you can also have 16X plus 4Y plus 25 is equal to 34. And then where they intersect, um, one second. Oh, yeah, where they intersect, you can just zoom in on the intersection there. Okay, so we get x is negative 1.25, so then a then would be, that's, you know, x we replace with a, so that's negative 0 0.125. And then b is equal to the y value, which is 2.75. You could also do the algebra by hand, okay? Like you could do this, but it's a calculator question, so might as well use tools. It's part of your, your, your learning here is learning how to use tools to solve things, okay. Use the given data to find the average rate of change of the total number of plays for the song in thousands per month from zero to four. Express your answer as a decimal approximation. Show you. So average rate of change, you should recognize is you do, it's like a slope, right? It's a slope between two points. You're gonna do the Y values and the, the two locations are zero and four. So that's gonna be 34 minus 25 divided by four minus zero. And that's gonna be, and, and you could, uh, let's see, fraction 34 minus 25 over four. That's gonna be 2.25. We're gonna put some units in here. Um, average rate of change in thousands per month, in thousands per month. Express your answer as a decimal approximation and show your computation. So we did, that's the computation. Use the average rate of change found in part B I to estimate the total number of plays for the song in thousands for T equals 1.5 months. Show the work that leads to your answer. So we're gonna estimate it at 1.5 is we're gonna say, well, it's 2.25 thousands per month. Um, I don't know if you wanna start at zero. I guess we could just start at zero or you could do it from two. It's just sort of, it doesn't really matter. You could just say it's, you could start at D of zero plus the rate times T, which is 1.5. So this is gonna be 25 plus 2.2, or plus, 
So this should be a plus 2.25 times uh, 1.5 months. So you could start it from there. You could also pick a closer value. And I don't know, this is one of those things that maybe there's a better criteria that they want to use you, you to use, but 2.25 times 1.5. You do that in your calculator, you're going to get 28.375 thousand. So that's one way to approximate. The other way you could say is like, well, that's the average rate, but maybe we want to do it based on off of two. So you could do D of two plus the rate. And then you would say like you're backing off 0.5 months. So it'd be negative 0.5 there. So that would be um, 30. I either of these are acceptable, by the way. Like, there's not like a right answer necessarily, strictly speaking, unless they have something in the guidelines, but they didn't say anything in the prompt to do that. And they get 28.875. So somewhere in that range is, this would be 28.875. And that's because it's not actually a constant rate. So it's an estimate, that's why it's an a estimate. You're estimating it here, right? This is another uh, possibility, okay? So, or, right? It doesn't, like, there's not one right answer on that one. Just depends on where you're estimating it from. There's an argument to be made that 1.5 is closer to two, so you should estimate from there, but it's like, for the purposes of being correct, I don't think it matters. Let AT represent the estimate of the total number of plays for the songs in thousands using the average rate of change. For A1.5, it can be shown that A.15 is less than D1.5. Um, so this is our estimate. In general, why is A of T less than, t where, where, why is our uh, estimate going to be less than there? Your explanation should include a reference of the graph of D and its relationship did. So they're telling us that, well, because it's a, it's a, it's a quadratic. So if we look at the shape of this equation, because it's a quadratic, um, it's concave down is the way we describe it. So D of X, well, we'll say T, is equal to negative 0.125T squared. Let's just go and plot it in. Plus 2.75T plus 25. And then we're gonna zoom out and then let's just confirm D of zero. Yeah, D of two, D of four. Okay, we got those numbers correct. So, so between zero and four, this is our time interval here. It's con, you can see it's, 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 concave downwards it's so any any estimate that you use is going to be um when you use a straight line estimate it's going to be an overestimate so in general it's because a of t less than d of t um wait why are they saying it's less than it Okay, if we're gonna use the estimate, then it looks like, now that I think back, because they want you, you have to start at zero for the estimate, okay? So I guess that's the standard way they teach you. You can't estimate it from two and go backwards um, in order to like align with the statement down here that that, that estimate is supposed to be less because the exact value is 28.843. So why why does that occur? Well, because it's because it's concave down, um, the, the, average, the average rate of change like because it's concave down, the average rate of change is less than the actual rate of change there. Um, so that's kind of the, the reasoning. Uh, let me look up what the exact reasoning that they would expect in something like this. So we do use concavity. It's because the secant line, because it's concave down, or actually it's between here and here, because it's concave down, the secant line is gonna be beneath the graph. That's why an underestimate um, because the A of T is estimated from the secant line. Uh, secant line, which is beneath D of T, because since D of T is concave down. Okay, so some kind of reasoning like that is what you would want to put in. The quadratic function model D is exactly one absolute min or one absolute maximum. That minimum or maximum can be used to determine the domain restriction for D. Based on the context of the problem, explain how that minimum or maximum can be used to determine the boundary for the domain of D. Um, well, because the the, to the, cum the total number of plays needs to keep going up. It's not like we can go back in time or we can't like have negative plays right? The maximum is going to be 
where the domain restricts because it's not supposed to bend down over here at this point, right? So this would be like, like the like like the total number of plays. If no one played anymore, then it would just flatten out at that. It's not like it could bend downward. The total number of plays can't decrease. Um, okay, so the the maximum would be where we have the the most number of plays. And the total number of plays cannot, total number of plays cannot decrease because it's cumulative. So the domain, so the domain of D would have to be between zero less than uh, t less than or equal to the location of the max maximum. Okay, so that is uh, I don't know. I think that's how, that's how I would explain something like that. 